What's up guys, welcome back to Still Nice CNC and today we're gonna to be tackling something simple but absolutely critical, installing an emergency stop switch on the Maso G3 controller. Because let's face it, when something goes wrong, you don't wanna go looking around for this magical button, do you? You just wanna slam it shut. We'll be drilling, wiring, and mounting the switch directly into the CNC arm giving it a clean professional look and making it easy to hit an emergency stop. First things first, we gotta measure the circumference of our e-stop switch. This tells us exactly how big of a hole we will need to drill to slam it. So you want a snug fit, not too tight, that it's gonna crack the housing and not too loose that it wobbles. This is ideal and it makes a big difference in how professional setups look. So first thing is, we're going to take our calibers and make sure that it is tuned to zero. We're going to take the threaded part, that's this here, and we're going to measure it just like this. I'm getting almost 22 millimeters and we're going to be cutting with a 22 millimeter hole saw. So that being said, let's jump over to the CNC machine and start drilling. All right, so we got our measurement. Got to grab the magnetic drill so we can make some sparks fly. I just got to make sure that we have a 22 millimeter hole saw. If not, we're going to be using a 23. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to open this puppy up. Uh, doesn't want to spin. This is a 13 new. No. So I don't have a 22, but I have a 23. A 23 should be more than sufficient. Brand new, never been used. So we can look here and see that that's gonna be plenty of room, especially with this collet here, screw cap. So let's go ahead, replace this uh, needle. This helps us to center ourselves. Put this right on top, like so. And we're gonna just line it up with the two indexing screws or set screws. Okay, we don't wanna make it too tight right yet. We just wanna get both of them snugged up. All right, go ahead, that's one. That's two. I'm using a magnetic drill here because it gives us a rock solid stability when drilling through steel. We will place the hole right here, right on the side post of the CNC arm. Easy to see and even easier to reach during operations. Safety tip, just make sure you guys put on your safety glasses when you're cutting with any type of metal, wood, concrete, wear safety glasses. That's perfect. Clean edges, solid surface. Now we will flip around and make a small hole on the back side. This one will be for the cable exit. Here's where neatness matters. We'll feed the e-stop cable through the back following the arm's contour and then route it towards the Masho G3 controller enclosure. Cable management isn't just about looks, it's about keeping things safe organized and easy to service later. So if the back of your e-stops looks something similar to this with color coordination, there could be an issue. Let's look with the multimeter. So we're gonna turn our multimeter to continuity. We're gonna go ahead and test A first, which is the green side. You don't hear nothing. Flip it over to the B side. There you go. So when this is pulled out, like so, this will, uh, side B will go off. But when you press it, side B goes out. 
Side A though, as it's depressed, now sends a signal to Masso telling it to stop. So we have to use side A. All right, so first up, we're gonna go ahead and open this up here. I don't have spade connectors, unfortunately. Use some wire strippers. You only need two wires, but unfortunately I have uh, three in this one. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut one of them out. We'll go ahead and use uh, black and red, cut the brown out like so. Go ahead and strip back some wire. There we go, like so. And now I'm probably gonna most likely just use the ring terminals on here. So two of the babies like this. And what we're gonna do is slide it on like this. It's a little actually too long, but We'll just make sure it's right underneath there. Or you could even, we could even, um, I think we got enough room here. We're gonna open it up just a little bit more. And we'll just go ahead and bend the wire back like that. That way it gives a little bit more push on the inside. We'll go ahead and take a wire crimper or wire and the crimper tool itself. Put it right at the end of that like that. Put it back a little bit more. Slide it in. Crimp down. There's one. Just give it a nice tug. Do the same thing with the next one. Ooh, almost crimped the other one. Just like that. So now what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and take these out. Doesn't matter which wire goes where because it all just goes to, uh, uh, one goes a positive and the other one just goes into the terminal to kill it. Just take this wire here and feed it down. Like so. Actually, I didn't realize I could even put my hand in there. Let's see if I can put my hand up there. Might even be a bit easier without trying to. Okay, my forearm is way too freaking huge for this. All right, there we go, look at that. What? I gotta adjust. This adjusts a little bit better. I also forgot the uh, washer here. Look at that. I didn't know my arm could fit up there like that. I'm always nervous about uh, putting my arm up sharp metal pieces like this, only because I wound up cutting this finger pretty deep uh, in the beginning of this, or last year actually. this and comes this so Cable management isn't just about looks, it's about keeping things safe, organized, and easy to service later. Okay, so we're gonna get ready to connect the Masso G3 to a new e-stop. So this is gonna come underneath like this. Some of this stuff is gonna get swapped out later on, but for now, it's gonna run just like that over to the e-stop right here, as you can see that. So what I'm gonna do now is 
Cut back the ferrule connectors, the white ones. Connect. Should have probably twisted the uh, plastic ends before I uh, pulled it off. There's one. And there's two. And special tool. Just like that. And there's enough room for me to run cable like this. So we're gonna put it into e-stop two. Like I said, it doesn't matter which cable. We'll put black in just because there's already a black one here. Now I'll go ahead and run this one to a power, power spot over here. Let's go test if it works. Power on. All right. It says press and release for e-stop. So let's do this one here. Release it. Enter. Press and release. So it could be uh, on a controller here. This one. There you go. Should have released? No? Okay, then it's gotta be the one over here. Let me see. All right, so I wired up the controller or the uh, sensor wrong or the e-stop switch. Uh, it is not the A side that needs to be hooked up, it is the B side. And it's not individual into the uh, stop here and a stop here. I'm trying to have everything run into series. So what I did was I disconnected the cable from this one down here uh, that runs into here and run it uh, in parallel with this one. See, thanks. All right. So now when I hit the east, so now if I hit here, and the one that's over here, if I push it, it should also be disconnected, right? Not. Why is that? <laughs> it's weird. So if I connect, if I hit this one, it should also go into fault mode. There we go. So if you notice that all your e-stops, even on, even on here, the pendant is not releasing, then you gotta check your other e-stop and release it. And that right there is ran in series. Moment of truth. Let's hit the switch and see what happens. It's moving slowly. There we go. Perfect, quick response, exactly what we wanted. So there you have it, a clean, functional, and safe e-stop installation for the Maso G3 controller. Small upgrade, big peace of mind. If you enjoyed this one, hit that like button, drop a comment below, where would you install your e-stop? I'd love to hear your ideas.